Do you want to cut your reliance on the grid or do you want to save money by charging batteries overnight when the cost of electricity is cheaper? Well, that's exactly what I wanted to do and that's why I started looking into home storage batteries over two years ago now. But here's the thing, there are hundreds of different options and it can be overwhelming for even someone who, like me, I love to research and get into the nitty gritty details. But choosing the wrong one could be a big mistake and could cost thousands of pounds. So in this video, I'll walk you through how I chose this option for me and spent my hard earned money on it. I'm gonna show you my process. And as I walk you through that, you'll see how I chose the right storage battery for me, but hopefully that will save you from making the same mistakes that I very nearly did. When I first started looking two years ago, it was completely overwhelming. There were brands claiming to be the safest and the most efficient and the best value. There were glossy brochures and there were also very confusing spec sheets. I just needed something that would actually work with the inverter that I already had. It would be affordable, fit my budget and fit my criteria and the space that I had available. Make sure you subscribe for much more content like this. I've got a lot more coming about these home storage batteries and how they're performing, the actual nitty gritty details of does it deliver on the promises. I had a couple of main criteria when I tried to filter out which batteries to investigate and which ones to dismiss. Of course, compatibility with my Sunsync inverter was essential. Secondary to that was the capacity of the batteries in conjunction with the cost, how much storage per pound I was actually getting. So many manufacturers, they may claim a 10 kilowatt hour battery, but if you only have an 80% depth of discharge, then you're not even gonna be able to access eight kilowatt hours in reality. Physically locating it was a big issue. Many batteries can be deep and wide, and some batteries can just be very tall. So measure up the space that you have available you can see how well my batteries fit in the space that I had allocated. My batteries are in a garage which gets cold in the winter. These have internal heating, so they can keep the batteries in a good operating window for them to work efficiently and not to damage the cells as well. And perhaps this is important, especially with the recent news of Tesla Powerwall 2s causing damage in Australia and potentially NMC chemistry not really being that safe to have strapped to your house or inside your garage. So I looked for batteries that were the LFP chemistry and these, for example, they have inbuilt fire suppression systems in case the worst were to happen. It's good to have redundancy when it comes to safety systems. So I started out looking at the Sunsync batteries, the ones that would natively connect with my Sunsync inverter, but they were limited to five kilowatt hour battery modules. They seem to fit well in the space, but I would be able to get two with the recommended spacing around them and even then it was a bit of a push and I would have to sacrifice more wall space or move some things around in my garage to get more than 10 kilowatt hours sighted. Kind of ruled those out. They were also not the most expensive, but they also weren't that cheap per kilowatt hour. I then looked at the pylon tech option. Very popular, very easy to expand. A lot of people seem to be rating them quite highly two years ago. Now things have moved on and pylon techs are looking a little bit long in the tooth. There would have been ways for me to stack them up along here, but really they were ideal for a rack mounted system. Not really what I've got space for. I needed something quite slim and flat against the wall. I then discovered the fog style batteries and almost two years ago now, I made a video about them and that was a very successful video for the channel, one of the most successful ones. Fogstar looked to be incredibly good value for money and I was very tempted to pull the trigger just there and then. When I crunched the numbers, however, it didn't seem like batteries were actually gonna return my investment as quickly as I anticipated. So I held off. There was another thing that was niggling away at me. The Sunsync batteries weren't really quite shallow enough to go back against this wall and still allow me good access in and out of the garage. Roll the clips so you can understand why this is essential. The Fogstar batteries also had a specific weakness and that was the depth of discharge. Now there are some versions of the Fogstar battery that have been improved. Some of them have different uh, BMS 
systems and different firmware which allows varying levels of depth of discharge. So I don't want to say a blanket statement that Fogstar can only do 80% because I believe they have some products that do 90% now. That was quite an issue. You were looking at buying a 15 kilowatt hour battery, but in reality, you could not access three or maybe more kilowatt hours of that storage. Their warranty also had some question marks. Their warranty didn't cover as many cycle lives as most people who were covering 6,000 or 8,000 or 10,000 cycles. Some of the Fogstar batteries at the time only had a warranty of 3,000 cycles. So in the end, after a long time of looking and pursuing various options, Earlier this year, I was made aware of the Dynas Powerbox G2, and it just seemed to tick all of my boxes. It's the perfect size for the space. Two of them can be daisy chained to give me over 20 kilowatt hours of storage, has a 95% depth of discharge, unlimited cycle warranty, inbuilt heating for my cold garage, fire suppression system, works with my inverter, independent Wi-Fi on both of the batteries, which allows cell-by-cell -cell monitoring of both the voltage and temperature. Only one niggle so far. The Wi-Fi on that one doesn't seem to want to connect. This one connected straight away. Absolutely crucial was how slim these batteries are. One of the slimmest batteries out there. And so whilst they take a lot of wall real estate, that doesn't matter to me because they're not encroaching upon the room. So for me, this is my sweet spot. What do you think? Did I make the right decision? Do you understand why I chose what I chose? And if you chose a different battery, let me know why you chose what you chose down in the comments. This wasn't the cheapest, it wasn't the flashiest, it wasn't the largest in capacity, but it was just right for my needs. So if you're thinking about adding a home storage battery, don't get bowled over by a Tesla Powerwall or a SIG Energy SIGIN store. Think about what your needs actually are. Write down a list of your criteria and then go from there because there will be a product to suit absolutely everyone. For you, it may be compatibility with tariffs. It may be value, how many kilowatt hours per pound that you're going to spend. It may be warranty and backup. It could be a physical mounting restriction just like I have here in my garage. And it could be those other concerns around heating and safety and other features like integrated Wi-Fi. But if you get clear in your mind what you actually need from a home storage battery before you go looking, you won't fall into the trap of wasting thousands of pounds of your money. I hope this helped. Thank you for watching everyone. Come back and visit me soon when I'm gonna talk a lot more about these batteries and also a further battery system which we are adding to the property. Make sure you like and subscribe to ensure you don't miss any future content like this and please comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching everyone. Hopefully you'll join me in a future video.